I'm an engineer. I've designed a lot of those culverts. I understand that quite well. Um, there's an emerging uh, science in my field. It's called low impact development. It's uh, treating the stormwater, the rainwater, closer to the source. So um, encouraging people to have things like rainwater cisterns, uh, rain barrels, um, encouraging people to have more green space rather than paving a big part of their uh, yard or parking lot. Um, we would encourage things like pervious pavements. Um, some of the big contributors that have driven around the watershed a lot are um, big industrial parks, um, like uh, large warehouses. Uh, there's a couple of, obviously, industrial parks um, around Rapid City, and if you drive around them at all during a rainstorm, which I have and taken lots of pictures, there's a lot of runoff that come from those. And, and that can be a place where we can target and, and work to try and reduce the amount of runoff. So if we can keep the rain closer to where it fell on the ground, then we don't have to build as big of uh, drainage structures downstream. And it's been proven in a lot of case studies already um, that you can actually save money in the long run. You don't have to build as big of uh, bridges and culverts if you can keep that stormwater where it originally uh, started. Uh, so stormwater, sorry, fish habitat. Uh, so uh, Rapid Creek has some issues. It's a, it is actually a, a, a blue ribbon brown trout uh, fishery within Rapid City. The section within Rapid City is a great uh, breeding ground for brown trout, but it's being impaired by all the runoff. Um, and so we would work together with the uh, game fish and parks so we could uh, try and address that and create a better fishery. Um, the fishing industry in South Dakota uh, is a huge industry, and it brings a lot of uh, tourism dollars to Rapid City. And, and we think that that should be capitalized on and that we could create a better uh, fishing access for people within Rapid City. Uh, parks and recreation, like I said earlier, green spaces are our friend when it comes to runoff, trying to infiltrate more of that runoff. Um, so we would see more green spaces around Rapid City, and I think the residents uh, would be happy to see that, but it it's also helps us a lot with uh, stormwater runoff. Conservation practices, um, uh, we've been all around the watershed. Um, it's in pretty good shape. The farmers and ranchers are treating the watershed quite well. Um, there's not a lot of uh, open fallow or anything like that. There's a lot of uh, good uh, conservation practices already going on in the watershed. We will, however, be meeting um, with um, some of the ranchers down in uh, Caputa tonight, actually, in a, in a community meeting, just to give them a heads up that we're talking about this project so they're involved early on, um, not asking them to do anything, just uh, getting the word out and, and let them think about it um, and let us know if they have any concerns about the project. And, sir, where will that meeting be? Uh, at the, there's a corner, a general store yep. in, uh, right there in Caputa. Time. About the only building in town, but what time? Uh, Six thirty, I believe. Okay. Denise, if you can. Oh yeah, they have a, a dinner every Tuesday night, so come down down for dinner six o'clock roughly, and bring your money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's a little timeline where we're talking about. So what I've put up here on this is the first half of the timeline. This is where we're at right now. So the, like I talked about, the DENR put Rapid Creek on their 303D list. Uh, there was a bacteria TMDL written, sediment TMDL, and now we're in phase one of the project. So we're just going out and educating people uh, who's interested and who's interested in participating in a planning grant. Um, so uh, West Dakota Water Development District has a, agreed to be the project sponsor, which means they're the ones that are uh, uh, held responsible to carry out the grant. Um, and they have identified this scope for us to develop the project. So we have a contract with them uh, to get the project off the ground. What we're doing right now is identifying potential supporters and educating those supporters. Thus, I'm here today. Uh, we've also met with a number of groups around town. I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a list of them in a minute. Um, the second half of this contract is define the project scope and secure written commitments. So that's dependent on the county and the other supporters that we talk to. What are you interested in doing? What are you willing to do? We don't want to get too far down the line and write a lot of things in reports that we say we want to do and nobody's interested in doing. So we want to have that discussion now. Um, and then secure written commitments. We'd like you know, a memorandum of understanding that you know, we're willing to participate in the project. These are the roles we're willing to participate in, be it staffing, be it um, 
cost share with the grant match requirement, um, be it uh, suggesting best management practices, um, or in the county's case, I know you have a great uh, septic tank inspection program that you've been uh, getting off the ground in recent years. Um, is there anything that we can do to, to kind of make that better? Um, and so we can incorporate that into the planning process as well. So that was phase one, everything we've done up to date. Um, phase two and three, so the project would uh, be a planning grant that would last uh, roughly a year to a year and a half, and then an implementation grant. Jeff will come up and talk about the planning grant, and I'll let him take it uh, from there. Before I let Jeff uh, go, do you guys have any uh, questions so far? Mr. Chairman. <coughs> yeah, I do. Uh, when you talk about uh, increased urban runoff, et cetera, uh, and, and you're looking at tapping into some federal grants, how about the city's so-called rain tax? Are we going to, uh, are, you, are you going to uh, get in contact with them to try to get some of that money? Yeah, uh, certainly. Uh, we've been meeting with the city multiple occasions since November of last year. Um, and so we're in discussions with them and uh, we uh, don't feel <laughs> that the project could, should go forward without the city's support. And so we won't move forward without some form of participation from the city. So. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Any other questions? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, you, is it going to be a voluntary program for the farmers and ranchers, or is it going to be required? What are you looking for from them? Sure. Uh, the definition of the 319 program is absolutely voluntary. Okay. Um, Jeff is going to speak a little bit more about how we go about doing that. Our approach is a little bit different. Um, I'll just uh, kind of give you a, a little scenario. So let's say that we have a rancher that has a feedlot right next to the creek. Mm -hmm. And let's say that some of that is running off into the creek. Um, I mean, I, my grandfather is a rancher and my father-in-law is a big rancher as well. And I, I get into long conversations being an environmental engineer <laughs> with what's practical for them. You know, I don't want to propose something to a rancher in Pennington County that I wouldn't propose to my own father-in-law. Um, so. Most of the time, those guys that have a problem and they know, they know they have a problem, they know that it's running off into the creek, are probably not going to respond to a newspaper ad or come knocking on the county's door and saying, I want to participate in this grant program. And we realize that as Northwater. This is our job and we want to do the best that we can to clean up the watershed. So we have a model that we use. It works within GIS. It uses the county tax rolls to identify parcels. It uses a lot of soils information that's already available on the internet. The county has a lot of that information already. Soil, uh, so, uh, slope. Uh, so this uh, graphic that you see before you here, and if Jeff handed out a handout, the audience has it as well. This is actually the slope of the ground around Rapid Creek in the Rapid Creek watershed, and so it's by color. So where you see the reds and the oranges, that's steep slope. Where you see the greens, that's flatter slope. So you can see in the upper watershed, it's significantly steeper. And so the GIS model will identify areas where they have steep slope, highly erodible soil, and a land use. We use a land use layer that would be, say, industrial, maybe a chemical plant. If somebody built a chemical plant or a mining operation on a steep, highly erodible slope, <coughs> it's going to show up as a big red blob in our presentation. Uh, in our in our figures, and we don't just go to the newspaper and publish these. You know, we have experience in doing this. We discreetly contact the landowner, usually through somebody that knows them already, and we talk to them and we say, you know, we've identified this problem on your property. Are you interested in working with us? And if they're not interested, we have no problem. We're not going to blow the whistle on them. We're going to turn around and walk away because that's going to ruin our project, and we don't want to do that. So that's how Northwater operates different. We target the areas that are problem areas and we go talk to that person. Rather than what I notice has been done in some other <coughs> watershed plans, it's not necessarily going out into the watershed and identifying where the project areas are. They're more focused on taking water samples in the creek and saying, oh, we found a contamination potential somewhere upstream of here. We're not sure really where, but it must be somewhere upstream. Um, because that's a traditional approach to doing watershed modeling. It uses an HSPF model. We use GIS. So we don't have to go out and collect a lot of data. It's already there for us. Um, so 
Our planning grant, uh, you may be familiar with some of the um, cost, costs associated with uh, other watershed plans. We're seeing it probably in the $150,000 to $200,000 range to do the whole planning grant uh, for this and create a model. Now that's uh, generally about half or less than a typical planning grant that other companies would do. Now we're not hired to do that at this point, but if we were hired, um, then I mean that's the direction that we're going and that's how we operate, so. So, Mr. Chair, I also have another. Um, you know, the city has spent <coughs> considerable time, probably four years ago, going through some stormwater planning and so on. Are you going to use their information as you work through development of your plan? Yeah, or certainly. are you just yeah. going to do your own GIS? And I, I, I mean, I guess what I'm asking is, we, there's been a lot of activity the last five or six years in this area on this, and I'm just curious if you're, it, it sort of sounded like that was the old, and now you're gonna just do your GIS, and I'm curious about that. Oh, uh, no, uh, the old I mean is, um, the city doesn't necessarily look at, as, look at it as an entire watershed. They don't necessarily look at the effects in Farmingdale that their runoff is having in Rapid City. Mm. Um, I guess so I was at some of those meetings, so I, hmm. okay. Does that, does that sound accurate or not really? Well, I, I just know that I, I didn't go to a lot of them, but the ones that I did, I felt like they were looking at the whole. Oh, okay. Yeah, the whole sure. crick issue. Well, you know, we don't pretend, we don't want to spend any extra time that we don't have to. Mm -hmm. um, that's why we've engaged the city and we want to work hand in hand with their GIS department and whatever data and information has been collected already, we're not going to go get that again. Okay. We want to, you know, have full access to their records as well as the county records and to be able to bring that all together into one concise model. And the more work that's been done already, frankly, it makes our project smaller and simpler and cheaper. Okay. Um, because there is considerable amount of information out there, and I just thought, well, you know, it sort of sounded like that was the old way, and I just wanted yeah. to know if it was only the new way. So. Yeah. No, and I've talked to, uh, you, you might know Dr. Scott Kenner at the School of Mines. Mm -hmm. He's been involved at the ground level of a lot of these projects. Yes. And I've had a lot of conversations with him, and he's outlined all the studies and reports that have been written, and, we, and we've looked over all of those, and we're uh, quite aware of all of those reports and okay. studies. And we also have the USGS on, on our team as well. They've actually already given us a proposal for what they would like to do as part of the project. Um, the city contracts with the USGS to do a lot of their water quality sampling and a lot of their watershed studies. Um, they've, done a, they, they've done detailed studies on a couple of different watersheds within the city. And they've learned a lot of great information. And, and so we've already incorporated that into a lot of our planning so far. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair? Yes. <clears throat> if I might, um, are you going to take a good long look at the Rapid City treatment plant you know, along with this program and not just look at the private individuals up and down the creek? Sure, absolutely. Um, one of my specialties is water wastewater treatment. <coughs> I spent six years designing wastewater treatment plants. Um, and so I, first day I came to town three years ago, I toured the wastewater treatment plant uh, within a month or so. I'm, I'm well aware of the, the technologies, that, technologies that they're using out there. <coughs> I understand the implications of if we make any recommendations to clean something up. I know how much that's going to cost and what it's going to take to implement that. Um, and I, I've met with uh, Dave Van Cleve at the city. He's the water reclamation supervisor. And we've talked about this project. Um, and so, yeah, I, I mean, I, that's my role. One of my key roles in, in a lot of the other watershed plans that we do is I do assessments of wastewater treatment plants. Um, well, cleanliness by dilution is getting old hat. Well, yeah. So, I mean, we'll certainly look at it. <clears throat> and our goal is to clean up the creek, whatever it takes to clean up the creek. Wherever we find the source, we're going to try and uh, root it out. So. Uh, Mr. Chair, I do have another question. Another thing that we've kind of been looking at as a county lately is Hawthorne Ditch. Mm -hmm. um, have, uh, have you connected with that authority at all? Because I think they're... I, one of the things we've discovered is that, as you talked about the runoff from from uh, the streets and so on, I mean, we need to make some changes as a county of how we require those developers to mm -hmm. um, to structure all of that. 
but I, I didn't know if you had talked to them because certainly that's something we've been starting to work at. Certainly. Uh, since the um, summer. Harold uh, Beese, you might know him. He gave us a tour of the, of the ditch about a month or so ago. He's a wealth of information. He's got a lot of great ideas. Mm -hmm. um, both Harold and I would not like to see the ditch filled in as other ditches have been. We'd like to see it used as a resource. Mm -hmm. um, but it is currently being abused by stormwater runoff. Mm -hmm. It was meant to take water off of Rabbit Creek and irrigate bottom land for ranchers. It's been used as uh, stormwater runoff. A lot of developments just run into it. Yeah. And even when no water goes into the creek, it overflows onto property owners. Um, and Harold gets a phone call, often nasty. Um, your water out of your ditch is running onto my property. And he explains that you know it's not coming off Rapid Creek. It's not my irrigation water. It's runoff water. So it is a problem. And it, and it could absolutely result in litigation to the county. Um, and I think our model would be a great resource to be able to figure out what the ditch can handle and how we can better use that as a resource. There's a lot of landowners that live along that ditch right now, and, the, and the, the ditch company is happy to enter in a contract with them for irrigation water or their lawns, and I think that's a great resource. I think we should pursue that. There are other cities in South Dakota that have <coughs> ditches where people use the irrigation water to, to irrigate their lawns at a significantly lower rate um, than treated drinking water, and the city is always trying to look for water rights um, because they're they're always needing to supply more and more water to the residents. Um, and this would reduce that requirement for the city if more residents used uh, river, creek water to water their lawns rather than using treated drinking water. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot cheaper source. I think uh, he said that they charge them $100 a year uh, for, a, I think, a one-inch discharge pump, which if any of you are watering your lawns, that'd be a steal of the century. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a, a resource that we should be using for all those developments that live along that ditch. So, okay. With that, I'll let Jeff uh, uh, talk just a little bit about uh, the technical approach. <coughs> Thanks. Dave, Dave did most of the work, so I'll try and keep this short. Uh, I just wanted to follow up quickly on your question about the city you stormwater. Know. Identify yourself. Oh, sorry. Please. My name is Jeff Beckler, and... Uh, I'm a watershed planner with Northwater Consulting, actually co-owner of the company, uh, and I work exclusively on developing watershed plans. My background's in planning. Uh, I have experience in both the private and the public sector, <coughs> and uh, I'm also kind of a bit of a mapping guru and nerd, and I do a lot of our mapping and modeling work. So um, if we were to do uh, work on Rapid Creek, I would be assisting Dave, definitely. Uh, and I, I wanted to just add to the question about the stormwater runoff and the city stormwater management planning. One of the differences, one, one of the things that we would look at that would be different would be, so they're looking at water quantity a lot of it and how to get it, mm -hmm. you know, how to manage it in terms of quantity. Not necessarily quality. That's where, that's the difference here. We're looking at what is that, the quanti or the quality of that water that's actually running off in addition to quantity, but also more of a focus on quality because that's the target of the TMDL is to reduce that runoff, that bacteria runoff. So we want to know which areas are producing the highest per acre loading and, and deal with it more so from a quality standpoint. Okay. Um, so uh, a watershed plan really in my mind is mainly a means to an end. I mean, if you guys have experience with the Spring Creek project, you know what a watershed plan is. It's really a means to an end. It <coughs> describes uh, what you want to do, where you want to do it, uh, uh, technically how you want to do it and how much it's supposed to cost. But really, a watershed plan is only as good as the people that implement it. You could have the best, most specific watershed plan, but if the, the um, stakeholders that own the property of which that watershed plan is developed on aren't willing to implement it, then it's really no good to have a watershed plan uh, in the first place. So our, our approach kind of tries to mitigate that potential issue by doing some things up front. Um, one of the th primary things is gaining a really thorough understanding of the watershed, and that means getting out into it, not just being in the creek, but driving the watershed, talking to people that uh, live in the watershed, touring properties, and getting a feel for what's happening out there. Um, we use map layers and GIS to help uh, streamline the process of analysis and create layers that may not actually be uh, existing, but will help us in identifying appropriate sources and solutions. 
Uh, we talked about engaging key agencies and groups, that's critical. We like to do that early on in the process. I know Dave uh, mentioned uh, how we would interact with producers. We do that in every one of our watershed plans. It's the first step is interacting one-on-one -on -one with the people that own the ground and the watershed. Public meetings are fine, but not everybody shows up, and particular, particularly the folks that um, would be interested in doing so something aren't often the ones that show up. So we like to engage with producers, uh, landowners, government agencies up front, ask them what they're interested in doing or not interested in doing, because why would we put a recommendation in a plan if we know it's never going to be implemented? The people implementing the plan are going to struggle implementing those recommendations if there isn't support for putting them on the ground. So that's a key uh, part of the process. And then, and that kind of leads into the third bolded thing, which I think is the most important thing in a plan. Planning gets such a bad rap because watershed plans aren't done right and people struggle to implement them. What ends up happening is you spend this time developing a watershed plan and you go to implement it and you find out you have to do more planning. And so planning gets a bad rap. One of the ways to mitigate that is to include specific project locations. Identify either through what the cities I already identified, through learning about the watershed, and say this is the spot where this practice needs to go, it's gonna cost this much, and it's gonna get us X tons per acre reduction in <coughs> annual sediment loads or bacterial loads. And that way you can prioritize projects based on cost, and you know they're feasible to a location so that there's no gap between planning and implementation. It's planning and directly into, into implementation, not planning and then a little bit more planning than trying to figure out more stuff before you implement. That's one of the other key factors. So we put, create, place a high reliance on identifying site-specific practices. i try and go a little bit quicker here. Um, part of the other requirements of a watershed plan. So there's things that need to be met by the state in order to be eligible for funding. A watershed plan has to be approved. It has to have all these elements. One of those elements is quantifying the pollution, uh, the amounts of pollution. The TMDL does that to some degree, but it does that in the creek. It doesn't say here's the percentage of it is coming from this part of the watershed or so much is coming from this part. So we propose actually developing a model to do just that because that's gonna help you prioritize projects to get them in the spot where you're going to get the biggest bang for the buck. And then, you know, obviously other pieces of the process, you know, cost estimates, education and outreach, one of the things we're doing right now uh, is also an important component, measurable milestones, how do you know you're uh, meeting your goals if you don't have something measurable to compare those to, and then monitoring plan. This is where uh, Dave mentioned the USGS, that's where they come in. Is the work we're doing, putting on the ground, is that having a measurable effect in wa on water quality? All components that are part of the plan. So current project partners, West Dakota Water Development District, uh, project sponsor, the US Geological Survey uh, has agreed to participate, uh, help out Black Hills RCND and the Natural Resource Conservation Service. Uh, we've, we've spoke to them, have, have essentially agreed to help us with landowner contacts and, and working <coughs> with producers uh, below Rapid City. So just to kind of give you a brief overview of this model that we've talked about, uh, Dave mentioned uh, that it's based on things like soils, land cover, precipitation. I want to say that any model that you, you know, everybody talks about models. Well, the core, the core thing with models is what you put into them is what you get out. A model is supposed to be predict, a, a tool to predict what's happening. Well, if you put the wrong information into it, you're going to get the wrong predictive information out of it. One of the things we really like to do is have good input information so we can have good output information. And that's kind of what our GIS model does. Uh, this is an example. We worked on a rural urbanized watershed, kind of half and half in uh, northern Chicago not too long ago. This is an example of a map that shows land use or what's happening on the ground. This is one of the elements that goes into, into our modeling. So what's happening? Is it manufacturing? Is it green space? Is it residential? Is it multifamily residential? From there, we take that information and utilize rainfall information, soils, information we've learned from touring the watershed, things like that, and we generate a map that shows loading. And so we can visualize, like Dave talked about, those hot spots, those areas that we should target first or likely target first uh, for implementation. 
This map shows acre uh, feet of runoff. You can see that <clears throat> the output of the model is a lot more visual. It's kind of easy to understand if you can see you know, red spots that kind of jumps out as you as a critical area. This shows uh, outputs of annual sediment load in pounds per acre. Uh, you can start seeing some of the spots that you know, our client now uh, should be working on. Those are the areas of the watershed where you're getting your highest sediment loads. Why would you work in a green area, you know, just because it's easy to, when you really should be focusing on the red areas? If that's where most of the load is coming from, why aren't you working there? Um, same with annual bacteria load. A lot of what our model relies on is how close that land unit is to a body of water. Pollutants are delivered to a water body faster and at higher levels if they are directly deposited into that water body. If a pollutant has time to flow through a grass filter strip and other things, as, not as much of it is delivered and it's not delivered at as high of rates. So our model takes into account, and that's why you can see in this bacteria results that a lot of the loading from bacteria are actually residential areas around lakes. So that's a general overview of the, the model. The planning process, I think Dave gave a really good explanation of, uh, of what we're doing now. Uh, and I guess if there are any other questions, uh, Dave, Dave is the point person. And, but I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have on the portion I just discussed. Any questions or comments? I think you've answered them all at this point. So. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> okay, next item is the lien request, release request. Commissioners, at this time, there is not a representative here to address that item. Um, what it boils down to is the applicant is simply requesting to release or remove the lien from the property, the real property, and keep it in place against the individuals. <coughs> I think that's pretty clearly laid out in the uh, supporting documents. Uh, does the commission what, wish to proceed on this matter? Or? Uh, I do. I, see Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to uh, 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 release the lien on, the, on this property. It's $270, which isn't a whole bunch, and it was uh, incurred before these people got... Uh, uh, or the applicant even gave a contract for deed for the property. So I guess I don't have a problem with that. So that's my motion. And I shouldn't have talked after I made the motion. Do we have a second? Um, will we take it off of this property but leave it in the person's name? We need name? a second before Correct. we discuss it. I'm, I'm trying to get that clarification. Okay, then I'll second it. <clears throat> okay, we have a second. No. Okay, now we can discuss it. And. Uh, I guess I have nothing further to say about it. It's, uh, you know, uh, as I understand it, the um, lien would remain in the name of the people, but it would be removed from the property itself. And uh, Jay, do you want to clarify that? That's correct. Jay Alderman with the state's attorney's office. Yeah, the request is to just remove <coughs> the lien from this specific described piece of property, but the lien will still be against the people and it will attach to any after acquired property that they uh, get an interest in. So it's still their debt and it'll attach to any real estate that they acquire in the future. Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, Jay, uh, if we take this lien off of this piece of property, that's the only hold that we have on those, these folks right now for the $270 that belongs to the taxpayers of Pennington County. That's, it, that's the only lien we would have right okay so once we take this lien off and we'll leave it attached to the people that have the lien against them but there isn't anything else there to attach and so this is actually to me is the only foothold we have and so i was just wondering why we should forego the 270 dollar lien for the taxpayer of pennington county to a lending agency that's getting away scott clean well, I guess I can add to it, uh, we have Credit Collections Bureau that also pursues liens, and uh, they can pursue this uh, judgment that the county has as well. So I know they get any number of uh, judgment liens, 
uh, it's still a, it's still a lien. It's still a judgment. It just isn't attached to a property, but they can pursue that independent of the real estate. So if it's on the list, yeah. uh, but right but right now the lending agency has sold the property to somebody else, and they weren't they're wanting a clear title to give to those folks. Correct. So if we don't clear the title, they're going to pay us the two hundred and seventy, and we don't have to pay the collecting agency the the finder fee for collecting it from the individuals. That would be a, a, a fair statement. It, Any further discussion? Questions? <coughs> if not, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Roll call. Buskerud? Yes. Davis? No. Holloway? No. Troutman? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Three to two. Motion carried. Okay, item 16 A, B, and C, and it's now 9.15. <clears throat> Quarter after three out in the hallway. Oh, so maybe we about ready to go home, all of us. <laughs> Julie Pearson, Pennington County Auditor. What we have before you on item 16A is the 915 scheduled supplemental hearing, public hearing for the drug seizure fund in the amount of $30,000 from non budgeted revenue received in the current year, supporting a non budgeted expense. Motion needed was is on the um, memo sent to the board as as well as the information from Sheriff Tone. Any questions or comments? I'd make a motion to approve the drug seizure fund operating budget supplement in the amount of thirty thousand dollars from non budgeted revenues received in this current year. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further comments? Questions? I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Does the drug seizure fund, do the money that we get from non-budgeted revenue and goes into that fund, does it have to be used for that particular drug seizure stuff to buy a vehicle? Or are we just supplementing the budget so we can get another new vehicle? Sheriff Tone. Well, just a comment about the uh, drug seizure funds in general. It's specified by statute what the funds can be used for. It has to be for law enforcement, drug enforcement related activities. So the funds are earmarked, if you will, for that function. That's what I wanted to know. Thank you, Sheriff. Yep. Any other questions or comments? If not, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next item. 14, or excuse me, 16B is a public hearing for a malt beverage license transfer. The transfer appears from the Gaslight owner's name, Big Guys LLC, to the same business name, the Gaslight Rockin' 4 LLC transfer fee, as well as um, off sale malt beverage and South Dakota wine license fee. For that usage. Mr. Chair, yes. those have been approved, I presume, by the Sheriff's Office. Yeah. I never yes, get that information. In yes. Yes. yes, I just wanted to, for the public's knowledge that that's yes. been investigated. So, All of these have to go through the uh, Sheriff's Office. We also send them to planning. Make a, make a motion to approve the uh, license as presented by the auditor. Second. You, uh, I think you used the plural when you said licenses. Did you wish to specify items B and C? Oh, that's correct. Item 16B, item 16C, as presented. And that is approved by the second? Yes. Okay, so we have a motion to approve items 16B and C. The motion has been seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item is items from the sheriff, 17A. <clears throat> yeah. 
Yeah, this is an annual vehicle purchase and you are oh, Kevin Tone being the county sheriff. Thank you. The, uh, the uh, motion I'm looking for is award the total bid for seven vehicles requested and seven vehicles allowed for trade to Repsy Chevy for a total difference of $88,035. And we had three bids come back and it's specified out in the memo, Rapid Chevy, Billion, Automotive, and McKee Ford. And again, we'd like to award that to Rapid Chevy. It would be um, a total of, I say seven vehicles and two of those are transport vans, the other five are sedans. We've had uh, good luck the last couple of years with getting value on our used vehicles for trading in. Then we buy generally newer used vehicles, so you get some of that initial depreciation off them. It comes out of our budgeted funds for this year. Any questions or comments? I'd make a motion to approve the purchase of uh, six used, one new vehicle. To Rapid Chevrolet in the amount of eighty-eight thousand thirty-five dollars with the trade-ins. That's correct. Is there a second? A second. Sec we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Any comments from anyone? Hearing none. Those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Item eighteen A. Items from the treasurer. Are you going to bring your boot up with you, or what happened to it? <laughs> Be careful what you say. It might come back to haunt you. <laughs> Good morning, Janet Saylor, Pennington County Treasurer. Before you, you have a list of the mobile home distress warrants that were, were presented um, by the Sheriff's Office. They are the uncollectible mobile home warrants. There are two. One is for $128.23. And the second one is for $79.84. There were 604 distress warrants turned over to the sheriff's office on January 3rd. Of those 604, there are um, only two that are being turned over as uncollectible. The sheriff's office collected a total for the year of $177,734.22. Of this, $150,110.78 were taxes. 88.32.87 was interest, $777 was advertising, $603 were penalties, $16,934.73 were fees, and $475.84 were costs by the Sheriff's Office. And our Sheriff's Office does a wonderful job on collecting these distress warrants. So I would like to thank Sheriff Tome and the Civil Div Division for a job well done for the county. So I need a motion for the commissioners to accept the uncollectible mobile homes as presented. That would be my motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I would, I would only make one comment. People that have mobile homes should pay their taxes on time because uh, we're getting about 99.9% .9 of them collected. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Mr. Commendable. Chair. Mr. Chair. Yes. I just, and I think Janet said it, but I don't think that um, her office <coughs> got enough pat on the back for it either. So the treasurer's office, the sheriff's office, as, as a team work together to put this together for the taxpayers, that's quite a collection rate. Thanks. Yeah. We have a motion and a second. Any further comments? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank, Thank you. you, Janet. Next item is 19A. 19B has been removed from the agenda. Do we have someone here for 19B? Yeah. Yes, we do. <laughs> Sorry about that. Mike Cool, Billings and Grounds. Uh, I just wanted to give the commission an update on the, the project, where it stands currently. Uh, of course, construction has been completed on the facility. Obviously, we're in it now. Um, uh, we have conducted uh, uh, numerous inspections, and we're currently 
going through our punch list with the contractors and our vendors to uh, address any outstanding issues. Um, everybody has been very responsive in addressing any of our concerns. Um, so that process is continuing. Um, currently, we're, uh, uh, we ha have, uh, are paying out uh, a uh, significant amount of the remaining amounts of uh, 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 values of the contract. Uh, but we are holding back um, monies in in regard to anything that's outstanding in terms of issues. So uh, we are whole, uh, anything that needs to be addressed yet. We are withholding money on uh, until we get those items addressed. Uh, furniture and equipment installations have gone very well and have been completed. Uh, of course, there are some items on there that need to be addressed as well. But we're working through those as well. Uh, I did want to just uh, also mention the the, uh, the move process. Um, it went extremely well um, with all the planning and efforts that went into that. Uh, thanks to uh, Holly and Rita in my office, um, they did an ex exceptional job of uh, <coughs> keeping that process moving along. And um, we finished every move ahead of schedule. Um, uh, and, and, and a lot of things goes to action movers as well because uh, they brought on additional staff so that they could make sure that we met any of those schedules that we had laid out for them. So they, they did an exceptional job. And I think everybody was very pleased with the work that they did. Um, with that, I guess I, I'll just try and respond to any questions you have. Any questions? Mr. Chair. Yeah. So, Mike, just for the public, um, the only department we don't have moved in right now is dispatch. That's correct. So maybe just... And, and, that and that's just a matter of them um, getting some uh, technological um, systems uh, worked out, coordinated with the state of South Dakota. Mm -hmm. And we expect that move to happen sometime next, early next year. Was it, uh, Mike, what's the time frame on the punch list items? You got any idea when? Uh, the, the, the the majority of them have probably been addressed already. Um, uh, there are some things that uh, we're, we're waiting to see some testing and balancing reports in terms of mechanical systems um, to verify that the systems are operating as they um, they should be. Um, so those are items that uh, when we see those reports, then we'll have a better understanding and should tell us that the building is functioning as designed and um, then, we, then we can release any money withheld in regard to those systems. Any other comments? Uh, Mr. Chair, Mike, do you want to talk about Friday? Sure. Uh, uh, we are, of course, holding a ribbon cutting, cutting ceremony on Friday at 11 o'clock. Um, uh, I believe we've run some advertising for it in the paper as well. Uh, the chamber and um, we'll be there to, in support of it. And we'll be doing some tours as well through the facility. So if anybody would like to, st to stop by on, at 11 o'clock on Friday and have an opportunity to walk through the building and get a little more information about it, um, they're welcome to do so. Okay. Well, Mike, uh, certainly Mike and Mike and all the people, Holly, Jessica, that organize this, the leadership, the cooperation is commendable. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is item 20 from Human Resources. Um, Pennington County Americans with Disability Act 1990 Compliance Review. Nick. Good morning, thank you. Nick Stroot, HR Director, ADA Coordinator for Pennington County. Um, what you received on the continuation of this item was um, a lot of attachments, but the first one was um, what I just called our um, updated agreement. Uh, we sent back um, mostly um, date submission requests, and they granted all of our 
requests. Um, we, I, I bulleted them in six. Uh, there was the updated agreement form, which they call the settlement agreement. Uh, the attachment A and B were just updated addresses to this building, since now this is where the official ADA coordinator's residence is. Um, the fine arts building in attachment E was removed. Um, and then attachment I and both of attachment K's just had updated dates of completion. Um, I, at the time I wrote, I was awaiting the answers to the two questions that were posed and I did receive those actually later that day. Uh, the first question was from Commissioner Holloway about how did we, how were we selected? And actually that was a mistake on our part. Um, Celeste, who was out here and who initiated the process, reminded us that we were actually picked based on the number of dis people with disabilities as reported in the 2010 census. And then when I mentioned a, an anonymous complaint, she reminded me that was actually how the city became involved in it in the Civic Center, but ours was initiated through a census report. And then the second one is talking with, from Commissioner Troutman about places like the Keystone Community Center, which are listed on there and that they recognize those aren't our buildings. And again, you can read, she said she understands it's not a county-owned facility. However, if we decide to pull there, then they have to um, abide by the ADA under their rules. So those are the two updates that I have. Um, there are other members of the ADA group. And so I guess we're at a point now where it's up to this board if they want to enter into this agreement, if they want to, or any other options you can present. So I'll stand for questions or any other, Kevin and Mike are here and Russ. So if you have any specific questions for them as well. Uh, Mr. Chair, I yeah. do. <laughs> I always have questions, sorry. <laughs> you know, I, I was interested in this independent licensed architect. Do we have any locally or do we have to bring someone in from outside? No, and actually Mike Cool and Mike Hughes, I don't want to speak for them if they've gotten further along than they brought me up to speed, but they were going to, they knew some people locally, okay. um, actually people with intimate knowledge of this building and some of our other facilities that they could talk to and see if this was the type of work that they could do. Okay. And is Julie still, oh yeah. On these polling places, I, I hate entering an agreement when I don't really have an idea of what we're going to do. <coughs> and um, that, are we just gonna have to change a bunch of our polling places? I hate doing that to voters, but. Uh, and and I can't speak for uh, Julie and Lori Severson is actually who mm -hmm. has been working with this too, but I, if we were to enter then into this agreement and we approached a center like the Keystone Community Center and said, here's a list of the things you would have to change for us to continue to pull here, they could say no, and then we, would, we wouldn't be able to pull there. Okay. And then the other thing um, with, with voting, it's like, it says within three months of the effective date of this agreement, Pennington County will make all voter registration materials available in alternate formats, including braille, large print. And that, and Julie can speak on that as well, but her and I have, she sent me a, a legal opinion that said that state law supersedes okay. um, this type of agreement and do that. I don't want to step on my interpretation of state law, but that is not allowed in South Dakota. Mm -hmm. And so um, those are the type of things that we would continue to work through. Um, I was told this is, this is a working relationship we're entering into. We let them know what South Dakota law is. They make modifications. They accept those. I, I know, but we're, we're signing an agreement that says we're going to do that. You know, I, I guess... I don't want to be caught later on, <laughs> so. Right, Yeah. And, and they understand that not, uh, this is like Mike said last time he was up here, this is something that we enter into an agreement and then we work with them to do the things that we can in the timeline that they provided. If that's not, re you know, if we reach that point and <coughs> it's, not, um, it's not done, it's not accomplished, we're not where we want to be, then we renegotiate with them, we talk to them, this isn't, Again, these are the two ladies that I'm dealing with. Say, this isn't 
if you don't do this, this is the punishment. There's none of that. It's a working agreement that we enter into. Mm -hmm. so. so so do we have a place in here that says anything about whether or not if the, the state law is different that the state law supersedes? Because I don't really remember reading oh, anything like there, that. But that is in South Dakota law. I'm I, quoting that correct. It's an AG's opinion okay. that on certain things with with relationship to elections, which this one's specifically related to, that we that state law supersedes federal law in some of these instances. We cannot implement anything with regards to forms or processes that aren't approved in state statutes. So I don't know the correct flow of signing the agreement when we know we can't mm -hmm. or won't do it until the state board of elections and the state legislature makes those changes. Okay. We do realize that polling places have to be accessible and that basically is an interpretation and um, we may end up closing some of our far reaching precincts because we can't find an, an adequate accessible polling location that that person or place or board wants to make those changes. Okay. And, and as an example, and this isn't as um, written in stone as a polling place, but Russ had brought forward some ideas and he wanted to present them to them. And then they told me the processes we enter into the agreement and then Russ and them start working together on some of the ideas that he has and some of the options mm -hmm. that he's going to do. We find the acceptable route that works for us and for them and then we move forward on those. So it's not that we have to come into this agree it, agreement knowing 100% how the, for the example, the website's going to look, mm -hmm. but it's the idea that the, the intent that we work together with them. Okay. Obviously polling places and state I, laws. I, I know more. it's a federal form and I know that, but I, I just would like that. I mean, I, I feel a little uncomfortable voting for it because it's we don't have it said that if we can't provide it, I mean, we, we make an honest effort to do what they ask us to, but if we can't, um, what happens then? Because it says we will do it. Yeah. I, I can't answer that question. Yeah. But what's really odd is that they're requiring Braille for those people with visual handicaps, and there's only like 3% of the... Uh, yeah blind population actually no braille. That's mm -hmm. not the avenue that those people with visual handicaps want to right. proceed either. But the response, uh, if, if that's the direction he is, Nick is getting, is we just simply respond from the State Board of Elections. We're gonna present this report to okay. them, which we won't be able to do until we get a new Secretary of State. So that will be sometime in 2015. Yeah, because it they says, refuse to do it, it says, Three months, 90 days. I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, already we've got things in here we can't satisfy. <laughs> and we're going to sign it today. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to chime in, too. Kevin Tome, Pinty County Sheriff, again. And I sit on the committee with Julie, Nick, and Mike, mm -hmm. and others. But I, I have some of the same concerns that Commissioner Troutman is raising is, you know, what are we committing ourselves to? And I've talked to another state agency that went through this exercise with um, this branch of government doing this same thing on the ADA compliance. And at the end of the day, I mean, they did the things that they could that were feasible, made sense, and could be implemented. And some of their facilities were just so old that it wasn't practical that they could do it. At the end of the day, they just said, we aren't going to do it. And I guess I'd like to see us have a comfort level that if we sign this, we still have some squiggle room at the end of the day to say, mm -hmm. we're just not going to do that. We'll do the ones that make sense and that are economically feasible, but at the end of the day, if we just can't do it with a certain facility or whatever, that we're not on the hook by signing this. And I don't know the answer to that. Okay. <coughs> Maybe this is a question as much for Nick uh, as anyone. Jay Alderman with the state's attorney's office. Certainly, uh, I appreciate your comment Commissioner Troutman that you don't want to sign something that says you absolutely have to do something but there's a general understanding that it's going to be okay if you can't but it doesn't say that in the document that's pretty logical we'd all be concerned about that so one of the questions I, I guess I'd have for Nick was there any indication from the folks on the other end of this that 
uh, they would be against any language that said, uh, for instance, for the um, election and voting issues, yeah. that that has to be presented to the state legislature, and we don't know, we can't agree to something that we have no control over, I guess is what I'm saying. Is there any um, discussion on that matter, or could they add one sentence to one of those paragraphs saying, as um, authorized by state legislature, or we intend to at least present, and then that's out of our control? In, in the entire time since you know 2010 this has been presented to us is this is a working relationship that you know we we have this law we want you to be able to work on within it and there wasn't um, any if you know if it's third three months and one day then this is the action we're going to take it was you know we continue to work with them and make the changes that we can in the time that we have and that's why they gave us the option to extend our time frames and we did on, on a number of things um, as far as um, I, I obviously can't answer that but it, it seems since we started with this group that if we were to pursue it to the point where it went to legislature and they said no we're not changing our voting for example that would be the outcome that we reach and I think I don't know, I don't want to speak for Kevin, but that's kind of what I've heard talking to other entities that have gone through this exercise as well, is you, you go through, you do your best, you continue to work, um, but you're, you're bound by other laws. And, and I understand that, but the difference is we are signing something that says we will do it, and you could have people come in doing the job that these two ladies are doing that has a completely different attitude. Absolutely. Um, the, is this the, the closest thing to answering your question on page 13 of 15, uh, item number 53, it says Pennington County may seek to That's modify, the circled. may seek to modify this agreement because of changed circumstances making performance in, impossible, et cetera, et cetera. The United States has to agree to that and it says the United States uh, agreement will not be unreasonably withheld. You see that language in any number of documents where it's their way of saying, we're, we're open to discussion, we're not going to unreasonably hold you to the fire or something that's out of your control. We can't control what the legislature does in authorizing uh, yeah. whatever it might Brand be, uh, balloting uh, <clears throat> measures and whatnot for the auditors across the state. So. That's your out language there, but it's still um, on the honor system. Uh, and so based on their interpretation, whoever is working. That's exactly and right. right. And that's, that, that's fair. Mr. Commissioner? Yes, sir. Jay, would you propose some additional language that we should put into this? This is their form, I assume. Yep. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing to say that we couldn't take their form and add another paragraph that clarifies this a little better before we sign it. And then give them 10 days to respond. So the, uh, <clears throat> I suppose if you're looking for a motion today, uh, the motion could be to uh, approve with the additional language related to the uh, elect, maybe I'd have Julie help us here. What What is it, Julie, that the auditor is not concerned is concerned that you cannot comply with within three months of the date of signing this agreement because that's the language or that's the topic that we would be looking at right but there may be other things come up that's, that's just a, an was example it an isolated incident relating to the polling places or was it a general paragraph related to i i, I would rather have it be general just with the law changes i would need it's with the entire right anything that they're right saying. Yeah. But I'm, that, you know, we've already heard from our buildings and grounds director that he's comfortable with everything they're asking of him. Mm -hmm. And, and your IT director's comfortable and already working towards solutions for the stuff they're asking for him. So I don't know if that's a fair blanket statement that we're not oh. comfortable with everything in that. But you cover yourself. Yeah. Uh, that's the, the thing. Mr. Chairman. Yes. We are uh, supposing, you know, most con contracts are between two people that uh, both give and take, and we are assuming that the, we're dealing with the same person, the same concept here, and we're not. Mm -hmm. United States government doesn't, <laughs> I, I don't believe very much of what they say or what they promise, and I think we're, we're going out on a limb if we say, oh, they'll do anything uh, that's reasonable. 
they do a lot of things that are unreasonable. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, I don't think we have much choice in signing the thing, so. Well, what happens if we don't sign? We well, it says take away your you're, birthday, you're, I guess. You're subject I to penalties, litigation, um, I mean, everything you can imagine, of course, and that's listed in here. Uh, after you don't sign it, I think that's when they send in more than two lawyers. So, well, yeah. uh, you know what they'll do. I mean, it's what they do to every, they do to the state and then what they'll do to us. You don't get any more federal money. And maybe that's a good thing, but uh, that's the first thing that'll happen is I, uh, we'll lose any federal grants that we have. I, I don't know that they realistically would be okay with language simply saying, and the parties agree that if we don't want to or don't feel we can comply with this, we don't have to. That basically nullifies the whole agreement. So there's, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how you would word that in such a way that it wouldn't mean exactly that, which would nullify this. Um, I, I can't obviously guarantee anything. I know that uh, as Nick stands here, he's had a good rapport with mm -hmm. the folks that have been involved in this <coughs> and very accommodating. Uh, this is an expensive uh, proposition, nothing like the city is going through, of course, we know that. It's gonna take some time but to the extent that we need to do this, which we appear to need to do, they have the jurisdiction to do this, they have all of the ammunition on their side, frankly. We know that, we understand that. These folks have been pretty accommodating working with us and, and being honest with us. And so from that perspective, I don't know what else to say. I think Nick would probably support what I just said. Absolutely, yeah. Any other comments or questions? Mr. Chair? Yes. I would make a motion that the chair fix his signature to the uh, documents provided for the ADA compliant. Do we have a second? I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I couldn't say it when I made the motion, but I'm holding my nose while I'm doing that. <laughs> Just thinks, but I don't think we have any choice. Okay, any other comments from anyone? not we do have a motion and a second all in favor of the motion say aye aye, aye. opposed motion carried thank you thank you nick unfortunately next item is item 21. you have nine minutes <laughs> all right we can accomplish this uh, Holly Hennings, Commission Office Manager. Item 21A is the County Official Bulletin Board. I met with the Building Committee after the last Commissioner's meeting. They have agreed um, that the placement of the Bulletin Board, which is at the main entrance of 130 Kansas City Street, does not interfere with the wayfinding signage. So today I'm asking for a motion to designate the wall directly inside the main entrance of the Pennington County Administration Building as the Bulletin Board location with the design as, print, as presented. Um, and the second motion would be to approve the chairman's signature on the resolution as presented. That's my motion. Second. No, are you making two motions and one? Uh, uh, it can be done as well. Whatever one. she said. Hmm? <laughs> whatever she said, it's good. She's just on both of them. Board. Board. Correct. Okay. As long as our <laughs> recorder is sure. satisfied. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? The only thing I'll say is that Karen does a great job of putting down what we said. <laughs> yes, she does. Interpreting. Okay, any other comments? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carried. Second item on my agenda today is, this is a request for approval to create an official Pennington County Facebook page. The demand by citizens for information at their fingertips has become a necessity and utilizing Facebook will allow us to meet this demand. Official county use of social media is intended to broaden the reach of communication and engagement with our community and stakeholders uh, while utilizing methods that offer communication beyond our traditional sources, such as our uh, legal notices, PSAs, news releases, um, things like that. Um, my envision for using the Pennington County Facebook page would be to post job listings, post commission agendas, closure notifications, including bu buildings, bro roads, bridges, et cetera. Um, upcoming events, awards recognitions. We would like to partner with the Emergency Management and the Sheriff's Office and um, share their pages as they're very active with their um, Facebook pages. 
As you know, in the past, we've struggled to uh, fill board openings. Um, we just thought it would be another avenue to reach a portion of our citizens that we traditionally haven't in the past. Um, you know, if the auditor so chooses, we could post voting information. The treasurer, we could post information there as well. Um, so today, all I'm seeking is um, authorization to create and utilize the Pennington County Facebook page with the guidelines as presented, <coughs> and I would stand for any questions that you may have. Uh, Mr. Pierce, how is this different than a website? It's more instantaneous. Well, I don't know. That's pretty instantaneous. <laughs> you just push a button on your computer and it comes up. It is. It is. It's just another means of social media. Any other comments? Oh, I got a ton of comments, but I won't make them. <laughs> the, um, as I understand it, if we move forward on this, we also are adopting the guidelines. Correct, sir. For, for use. What you wish. So, Mr. Chair, I would make a motion to authorize the creation and utilization of the Pennington County Facebook page with the guidelines as presented. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Third item on the agenda stems from a discussion that occurred at our last um, county commission meeting in regards to the MOU that was presented with you for the <coughs> economic development with Rapid City. Um, I was directed to complete some further research to see what other counties and how they handle economic development. Um, I reached out to all of my counterparts in the other South Dakota counties and nobody has any formalized policies or positions that they take in handling um, economic development for their counties. Um, I also did research on other st um, states or other counties across the United States and my research revealed that um, counties across the U.S. who are actively engaged in economic development have an established economic development authority or commission. Um, their authority makes recommendations and decisions which are continually vetted upon the annual goals as set by the Board of Commissioners. The types of goals they have are generally based on topics such as public health, public safety, um, preservation of natural resources, infrastructure, fiscal management, transparency, citizen involvement, um, a multitude of, of different goals that, that come directly from their county's Board of Commissioners. So I can certainly provide additional examples of the formal policies that these authorities have, <coughs> but I thought it would be appropriate for the board to have an additional discussion if they even wanted to go that route. So at this point, I would stand for any questions or... Any questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Chair, so Holly, what you're really saying is, do we as a county want to set goals and... and um, and, and, and I would say that probably many of the departments do, but um, is it more of formalization too? I, I Correct, correct. It would be more of formalizing um, what a board's wishes are for the county and its citizenry. So if uh, we um, adopted I guess I'm just going to go with an earlier discussion today. If we uh, adopted a goal of uh, supporting clean water projects, that would be a goal that um, as we move through planning and zoning, planning and zoning, if they were changing an ordinance, would look at that goal. Absolutely. That's what, you're, what these other counties are doing. Absolutely. You know, depending on the resources that they have, the geography that they have, um, there could be a number of mul a multitude of, of goals that they work on. It's a lot you know, of work. You could imagine some counties in Dallas. I mean, Dallas, Texas, mm -hmm. they're not big into agriculture. So they focus on manufacturing and exports and things like that. Sioux Falls. Yep. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Um, oh, Mr. Chairman. Oh. Yes. Well, let's see. There's the Chamber of Commerce. There's the Black Hills Vision. There's Black Hills Economic Development. There's Rapid City Economic Development. How many development economic development commissions do we need in this county? Mm -hmm. I mean, we belong to most of those, so 
I guess I fail to see the purpose. But but I think it's a little different. Uh, I mean, economic development, that MOU kind of started the thinking, but, but do we have goals that we, I mean, what do we want to see happen in our county? Do we want to promote agricultural um, endeavors? Do we, like I said, want to promote clean water and mm -hmm. that sort of thing? Are, are we, it's a lot of work to do that, it, and uh, the commission would need to be willing to do that, and maybe you start out small, but it seems like um, in an organization as large as we are, we don't have a general direction that our departments can follow. Um, something that we believe in as uh, a commission in a county. And maybe it's not something you think is worthwhile, but I, it, it seems like that MOU brings up those questions because we have not done that in the past. And this board does provide funding to a lot of those organizations, but are we truly communicating our wishes and our message mm -hmm. to those organizations as best we could? Where does the um, rail authority fit into this in terms of the suggestion that was made, I think, at the last meeting that Ben Snow and his organization would administer the rail authority? If we chose. At this time, my understanding is Pennington County is the umbrella over that rail authority, and they have not designated anybody yet no. to administer the rail authority. So I can't say right now that they are set to do that. No, the, I, I just wondered if, if some of this MOU discussion would embrace that and officially document that this is a working relationship if, if that's the well, course certainly. of action. We In the past, we have never signed MOUs um, with any of the subsidies that, that Pennington County has provided funding to. Yeah. It's just another mechanism to more formalize what our expectations are for providing them funding. I think I would recommend that we uh, continue this for further. Okay. What, what you wish. Mr. Chairman, I, I think it's a good idea. I mean, we, we never really have set out goals. I'm not sure we need another commission to do it. I mean, we're members of, of these, and maybe we can do it through them so they get the idea. But it surely wouldn't hurt to tell them, here's what we want. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, I, it gives us a stronger, um, a stronger position to say, you know, we're... We're interested in seeing this happen, and that's a county goal, and communicate that to them. Um, I just think that it, like I said, it's a lot of work, but um, I think there is base, uh, a base already of many of the departments that could come forward, and, and we could start there, too. At this point, I could certainly get something written up um, for a procedure, for lack of a different word, um, to present to the board on how you guys could come together as a sitting board and um, develop goals. Okay. Sure. And present that at a future commission meeting. Is that acceptable? Yep, I think yep. that's good. Okay, then we'll move on to item D. Okay, last item is, now that we've relocated, um, the next item to address in our new administration building is the artwork and or what is to be placed on the walls in our public areas. Um, what I'm asking of this board today is to request that an artwork committee could be, excuse me, my tongue is tight. I request an artwork committee be established to research, review, and implement artwork that may be placed within the Pennington County administration building. Um, this, this project, I mean, this is an amazing building. The workers, everyone has put their blood, sweat, and tears into this building. And I think that we need to take the appropriate amount of time and energy to decorate it with pride. 
So basically what I'm believing is this to be a one, one to two year project um, and we want to do that with a committee um, set up. I would ask that the committee be appointed by our building committee and they would uh, be responsible for organizing displays as well as purchasing pieces which would be owned by Pennington County and permanently displayed in our building. And what you have on your screens in front of you is, is an idea that I had. This building was built for the people and I would like the people to be able to have a say in what we put on our buildings and our walls. Um, one idea that I've had is to create a, a, conduct a photo contest and have individuals in our county submit their photographs of important landmarks and what depicts their spirit of Pennington County. And what you're seeing in front of you, um, that piece is actually by Mr. James Van Eyes. Um, it's an idea that we would like to purchase some of, you know, local artist pieces that we can put on the walls. That picture, um, go to the next one, please. That one is taken of the Badlands. That's right on the uh, Pennington County border. That was taken by a friend of mine. Um, his name is Jesse Tobles. Um, that's actually his mom's photograph. But to me, it's an amazing photo. The next one is of the scenic Kanata Basin of a thunderstorm that was building. So just wanted to give you guys an example of one of the ideas that were being tossed around of what we could do with our building. Um, and again, that would all be vetted through this artwork committee if the board so chooses to establish that. Um, so I would stand for any questions. The first motion that I'm requesting today is to create an artwork committee appointed by the building committee to administer and implement the artwork in the Pennington County Administration Building. Mr. Chair. Yes. I think the building committee has done a fantastic job of putting this situation together. Uh, it's a beautiful facility and I think they still have a vision about what it can be in the future and I would go along with that wholeheartedly that um, uh, they maybe not necessarily appoint another committee, but do it. Do the, the building committee do it? So. Do we have a motion? I think they're fully capable. I, I'm just going to mention, Ken, that we still have a lot of stuff to do, a lot of building issues. It might be easier to do the uh, committee um, that is answering to the building committee, but would do the work and not have the building committee do it. Right, guys? <laughs> Mr. Chair, she yeah. outfoxed me because why I said what I said was that I think we slow down the spending a little bit in the future. <laughs> Taxpayers could catch up. <laughs> yes. Would it be, the, would it be your um, <clears throat> intent that whatever this, if, if this little committee gets put together to do the artwork, that they would actually bring their recommendations back to the full board, this county commission, to make the final decision, or this little committee is going to make this final no, decision? No, this committee would have the authority to make the decisions and implement. So. Hmm. Mr. Chair, I don't like the idea that that committee would have the final say. I think that uh, when it comes to spending the taxpayers' money, I think this board should be the final say in it. So, so I like can, if, I can see us buying hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of pictures with uh, just as somebody, hey, boy, that looks nice. No, the next motion is for twenty thousand. Um, I and Ken, just to kind of say that one of the reasons that we looked at the photo contest was yes to bring people in and uh, residents and and they can contribute to the building by bringing their photos in. But if if you wanted that authority. Would you be choosing out of the photos that we receive which ones we put up? I, um, think, that, I think the committee should bring it to the county commission for final approval if they're going to spend money. Well, if they're going to have an art contest and hang their pictures out here for the for the time being, that you know that's one thing. But well, but all the way. Uh, you, you know, I'm not I'm not as hung up on the twenty thousand uh, dollars. <clears throat> having the committee uh, be able to spend up to it that amount. I think we've given committees, employees that, that range without having to bring it directly back to the county commission. But my concern is that that uh, if you have a good plan, if you've got a good 
group of pictures you want to hang up, you ought to be able to justify that. And this is a good mechanism to justify it. You bring it to the board, you show what it is, and you get at least three people up here to agree with you that it's a good picture, it's a good idea uh, of putting these things out rather than uh, a committee made up of I don't know how many people, maybe two or three, and having that, um, that small group have a dominant person in it and they're the ones that makes the decision. So if it's a good idea, bring it to this, this board uh, and, and justify it to them. And, and um, it, it, if, you, if you can't get three people here to agree, then it's probably not a good idea. Mr. Chair, yes. I can remember when the move was being made to put the bronze statues on the street corners and if the arch people in Pennington County and in Rapid City would have had their say about it, Maybe those would have never been there. And so uh, I have a little trouble just having the committee handle things, and I, I go along with Commissioner Holloway. Um, well, the, the art committee in Pennington in Rapid City wanted to go to Russia and look at the bronze statues that this gentleman was putting in this deal, uh, was going <coughs> to buy those bronze statues of Russian leaders and meld them down and bring them over here and make these bronze statues out of them, which was a good idea. We got some of Leonard Lennon statues off the street and uh, put some good presents on ours. But uh, they were finally shot down and the, and the move went on by them and they they made those statues. And I think it's a fabulous deal for Pennington County and Rapid City to have those statues on the corner. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what we need to look at is the final outcome should be the come from the commissioner. Then we can certainly change. I mean, if you still would like to approve the artwork committee, my, my thought was to appoint a commissioner um, a representative from buildings and grounds, um, maybe a department head or a county employee, and then two outside individuals um, from the public, um, citizenry, and have them come up with a plan. And we can certainly bring that back to the Board of Commissioners for, for final approval. Mr. Chairman, I would, have, I would make that motion. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. And that's uh, to create the committee. Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? Any comments? Mr. Chair, this doesn't necessarily fit right in with the, with the motion. I probably should have said it earlier, but I think we need to look at the, the Bill Grothy collection that he's made over the years of things that happened in Pennington County and his uh, moons of ripe cherries and pictures and all of those things that he has done. Uh, I think some of those would be fantastic to have in our courthouse. Okay. I don't know if you've seen them or not, but he's done a fabulous job of it. Okay, thank you. You got your plug in now. I don't get a commission. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Before you comment any further about the money, Jay, uh, Somewhere in my mind, I think there's a statute that says that money must be spent on artwork in public buildings. Is that just state or? You've been reading more books than I have. <laughs> <laughs> he just helped make the law. <laughs> I'm not familiar with such a statute, but um, tell me again what you. Well, it. it my my memory says that there <coughs> there is legislation or was that said a specific dollar amount or or at least money could be authorized and should be authorized for public buildings for our work. I, I'm not familiar with that statute, but that should be something pretty easy to find. Yeah, that's pretty specific. And. Um, I think, you know, if there's a question about the, the authority to spend money on artwork, I, I believe it is statutory. And as long as you're doing some research there, how about can we take that money out of uh, the, the uh, 
money that we used to build this place and furnish it. Is that considered furnishing? Instead of instead of taking it out of uh, contingency. At this point, it sounds like we need to do some research and come back to the board <laughs> at the next meeting with some more specific details. Yes, we can certainly do that. The question is whether whether it could be used out of the bond. Yes. Funds. And the reason I know that is that type of question came up when we were building the original jail. If we could buy supplies for the new structure and yes we could buy mops and buckets anything it takes to put that building to the final state can be once the building is finished then then no you could not use that okay so you're going to come back with yes i would like to talk to the building committee to see even what funds are have been allocated i don't know any of the bond funding details if there's even money available or if it really should come from contingency or another source. Okay, thank you. Okay, that completes your presentation at this, this moment. Um, at this time, I would respectfully request a break so we can reset and move to planning and zoning. How about that? That would be my motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a motion and a second to recess. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <coughs> I'm sorry. We'll um, call the meeting back to order. Are you ready? Uh, do we need a motion to reconvene? I don't know. No? Okay. We are reconvened and we do need a motion to go into <laughs> Board of Adjustment. That's my motion to go into a Board of Adjustment. Second. Motion and second to convene as the Board of Adjustment. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, PJ Conover, Interim Director, Planning uh, Department. The first item we have before you is variance 1425 uh, to reduce the minimum required side yard <laughs> setback from 25 feet to 20 feet uh, to construct a detached garage. The applicant is Julian Witcher. It's in the General Agricultural District. Basically, the history on this one is the applicant and owner came into the office to apply for a building permit for, a, for an attached garage to better serve the uh, needs of her son, who I believe is in a wheelchair. Uh, that was on September 23rd. And what it was determined by staff is that she required a setback variance because she was going to be too, too close uh, to the lot line to meet the required setback. Uh, she applied for the variance. She was issued a sign. She went back home put the sign up on the property. It was thought by some member of the family, not the applicant, that the sign was permission to start construction. So the garage is built, and uh, the, she had already started the process with the variance. So this is just basically bringing the property into compliance now. There was no, no other possibility, uh, no other location closer to the house that she could put the garage because of the on-site wastewater treatment system. So she is asking for you to allow uh, the variance to move forward. And if the Board of Adjustment approves variance 1425, staff recommends the following to, uh, be recommended with two conditions. Any comments or questions? <clears throat> I'd Mr. make Chair. a motion to approve the variance with the two uh, cited uh, conditions. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item B. Look at the floor. Here we go. Sorry. Uh, next item is variance 1426 to reduce the minimum lot size from 10 acres to 8.5 acres in a limited agriculture district. The applicant is Josiah and Pamela Frank, and surveyor is Davis Engineering, and the current zoning is General Agriculture. Uh, on September 2nd, 2014, layout plat 1414 was approved by this board with eight conditions. Primarily of concern is condition number five, which stated that the applicant for lot A had to uh, rezone the property to limited ag, and that would be for lots A, B, and C. And then after that, the applicant either rezone uh, lot A to low-density residential 
or obtain a lot size variance or increase the size of the lot from 8.5 acres to the required 10 acres that uh, is the minimum lot size in limited agriculture. The applicant has chosen, as you can see, to have a, a lot size variance put forth before this board. Uh, the applicant did uh, receive uh, rezoning from general ag to limited ag for lots A, B, and C on September 19th from this board and also uh, changed the comprehensive plan uh, from the future land use of plan unit development sensitive to limited agriculture. Now, like I said, lot A is 8.5, lot B's and lot C's exceed the minimum lot size requirement for the, for the area. Uh, on proposed lot A, uh, there is a single family residence, on-site wastewater system, and several outbuildings. The request was routed through the interdepartmental review process with no significant items uh, coming up for discussion. A uh, strict application of the zoning ordinance will require the proposed lot to meet the lot size of 10 acres, which would require the applicant to, re to reconsider the platting of the property. However, the applicant um, has chosen this layout to allow access to the, to the creek, to uh, Castle Creek for the owners of lot, or proposed owners of lot B. So this is their desired configuration. If the Board of Adjustment grants variance 1426, Staff recommends that no conditions of approval be added as they're being addressed through the layout plat 1427. <clears throat> Mr. Chair? Yes. That's my motion. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Motion to come out of the Board of Adjustment. Second. Motion and a second to adjourn as a Board of Adjustment. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Consent agenda. The Board of Commissioners uses a consent agenda to act on non-controversial and routine planning and zoning items quickly. The consent agenda is acted upon by one motion and vote of the Board. Mm -hmm. Items may be, review, re may be removed from the consent agenda and placed on the regular agenda at the request of a Board member or a citizen. The consent agenda for planning and zoning contains the following items. Item C, second reading rezone 1408, approval is recommended. Item D, second reading of ordinance amendment 1404, approval is recommended. Item E, minor plat 1425 and subdivision regulation variance 1411, approval is recommended with waivers. Item F, minor plat 1426, subdivision regulation 1412, approval is recommended with waivers. Item G, minor plat 1427, and subdivision regulation variance 1413, approval of recommended with waivers. Layout plat, for, I'm sorry, item number H, letter H, layout plat 1424, approval is recommended. Item I, plan unit development review, uh, we're requesting that this be continued to December 16th meeting. Item J, minor plat 1421, and subdivision regulation variance 1408, approval is recommended with waivers. Item K, first reading and public hearing of rezone 1409 and comprehensive plan amendment 1407, approval is recommended. Item L, minor plat 1422 and subdivision regulation variance 1409, approval is recommended with waivers. Item M, first reading and public hearing of rezone 1410 and comprehensive plan amendment 1408, and approval is recommended. Item N, and the last item on, the con on this, this consent agenda, minor plat 1423, and subdivision regulation variance 1410, approval is recommended with waivers. Does anyone wish any of the items on the consent agenda removed? Mr. Chair? Yes. I'd make a motion to uh, pass as presented item C through N, as presented by this uh, acting planning director. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further comments from anyone? Yes. I see Jim Skulls in the audience. I was wondering if he wanted to have us pull those items of his off. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you care to come up and comment? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Any other disparaging remarks? <laughs> There's no further comment. We do have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Item O.
Does it go without saying, Mr. Chair, that the guy in the audience did a fantastic job of putting this building together? Yeah. That's what, that's what I hear. <clears throat> go ahead. Good morning, Brittany Molitor. Um, I'm presenting the road construction within a section line, CS 14-01. The applicant is requesting to construct a cul-de-sac in order to provide future access to an existing lot to the west. In addition, the, the cul-de-sac is being constructed within the section line in order to meet Pennington County subdivision regulations for a pending plat request, which you just approved. <laughs> the construction is taking place um, about 102, there's about 102 feet of the section line that is currently a property line that is wooded has, and has rock outcroppings on both sides. The applicant has submitted plans that indicate the cul-de-sac will be constructed according to Pennington County Ordinance 14 standards. Uh, the cul-de-sac will be, sorry, I forgot that Good. part. <laughs> the cul-de-sac will be at the end of a newly constructed road that will serve four lots. The lots are currently zoned general agriculture at this time, but there is a pending request to rezone the lots to limited agriculture district. Um, currently, the parcels that will be served by the cul-de-sac are vacant of any structures. So if there's any questions. So the construction will actually... Okay. There's that technical difficulty you were talking about. Yes. So that government lot 12 will eventually it will access that lot, but he's only doing construction on the east portion of the section line for 102 feet. So we are recommending approval of this request with eight conditions. <clears throat> So moved, Mr. Chair, as presented by staff. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, is there any further questions or comments? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is items from the chair. And uh, at this point, I don't have anything specific to offer. <laughs> Again, I would like to thank Holly and Jessica and everyone who worked with the technical <coughs> aspects of getting this meeting conducted and uh, appreciate it very much. Do we have committee reports? I don't have anything. No, Mr. Chairman, nothing. Mr. Chair, uh, last Thursday I attended the Military Affairs Committee uh, meeting of uh, the uh, Chamber of Military Affairs. Uh, was out at the base, um, had several reports about uh, what our military is doing today and uh, where some of them were located and things. But my suggestion would be that someone else uh, start attending from the county commission, uh, join the Military Affairs Committee and start going to those meetings to present things back to the <coughs> commission from, from the military affairs. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else? Not, the next item is items from the public. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to address the meeting? <laughs> no? We've got plenty of time, you, you know, you can. If there's no one uh, from the public that wishes to address the commission, we, the next item is uh, executive session. Do we have a motion? I make a motion we go into executive session for personnel issues and contractual uh, pending litigation. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Where do, we, where do we do that in? Do we have a motion? 
you. That's you. Mr. Move Chair, do we need to make a motion to file a projection of session? There's a second. So it. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Mr. Chair, as um, a conversation in uh, executive session, I make a motion to approve uh, T.J. Conover as the planning director at grade 24, step one, effective as today's date. Second. We have a motion and a second. Anyone uh, wishing to comment? For or against? <laughs> Hearing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Congratulations. Any other creative motions? Make a motion, we retire. Second. <clears throat> motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We're adjourned.